Hello. So last time when we were going through our problems, we were working with what we call one solution problems. They're fairly complicated in that we're trying to get all those x's together and then solving for x from that point. But no matter what, I knew I was going to get one answer. The thing is, sometimes a problem doesn't just have one answer. In fact, sometimes problems can have many answers or no answers at all. So we're going to take a look at when that happens and let's do that using the bottom of that worksheet that you have from last time. Now when we're looking at these ones, we're going to have two general situations. They won't look much different initially than the problems that we had above, but a couple odd things are going to happen. So let's start with number seven. I'm going to go about solving this like I normally do. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of my parentheses so that I'm going to be able to move the terms around that are inside of it. And I can get rid of parentheses by distributing the multiplication of the two. So that gives me 2x plus 4 on this side of the equation. And on the other side of the equation, I still have 2x plus 4. Now you might right here notice something odd. The two sides of the equation are exactly the same. Now when this happens, it turns out that it will not matter what number I put in for x because no matter what, these two sides being identical are going to give me the exact same value. So I could put 1 in for x and I'll get 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 4, which is 6. And on the other side, of course, 2 times 1 is 2, and plus 4 is 6. So this is 6, and this is 6, so I know that 1 is a solution. Or I could put in, let's say, maybe 3 as a solution. So I've got 2 times 3, which gives me 6, plus 4 is 10, and then 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 4 equals 10, so it would be 10 and 10. And I know that that means that 3 is a solution. In fact, everything I put in for x will work. So that means when I'm looking for a solution, I'm not going to find 1. I'm going to find infinite solutions. And I'll find infinite solutions because these two things are always equal. Now let's say you didn't notice that though. You got to this and you were like all in the zone and you were saying, all right, combine my x's. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. Oh, if I subtract 2x from both sides, well now I don't have an x anymore, so I'm just left with 4 equals 4. And I don't even have an x, which it's kind of problematic because I'm trying to solve for an x. Well, as soon as you get to that stage, if x disappears and you're left with something that is true, like 4 equals itself, and that's definitely true, that's another indication that you have infinite solutions. So look for that sort of pattern. Now, sometimes you're going to get into a situation that looks a lot like this. Our x is going to disappear but we're going to have a bit of a problem because our equation won't make sense. So let's look at this one here. I have 5p plus 9 is equal to 2p plus 3. When I start to solve this, I start by simplifying and combining like terms where I can, which gives me 5p plus 9 is equal to 5p. Now maybe you've already noticed something wrong, but let's keep solving it as if we haven't at this point. I'm going to try to get p by itself. So let's combine my p values by subtracting 5p from both sides. Well, 5p minus 5p is 0, so we're left with 9 on this side. And on the other side, 5p plus that negative 5p is 0, so I'm left with 0 on this side as well. There's nothing left there. So I have 9 is equal to 0, which, let's face it, makes no sense at all. Because 9 is not equal to 0. It's not the same thing to say I have $9 and I have no money at all. So what this means is there is no possibility of a solution. And that's because you've put two things as equal to each other that it turns out are not ever going to be equal to each other. Just like 9 is never equal to 0, 5p plus 9 will never be equal to 2p plus 3. So they made a false assumption, and you're discovering it here through algebra. And if you look at like this middle step, it kind of makes sense that this will never work. Because you see how we have 5p on both sides? Well, I know that 5p is equal to 5p, but when I'm adding 9 to just one side, that's going to make this unbalanced. 
I'll never be able to get these balanced to each other because this 9 will always make the left side 9 values higher than the right side. So no matter what I find for P, it will never ever work. And even if you struggle to notice it early on, don't forget that it's going to look like this pretty much every time. You're going to get rid of your variable kind of on accident and you're going to end up with something that is just quite frankly false. The pattern with these two that you really need to watch for is these two are only a possibility if your variable disappears, which means that's only going to happen if you're subtracting the same thing from both sides here. Like I'm moving a 5p over and I have a 5p on this side and they end up canceling out. Be really, really careful here because just because some problems are going to have this identity problem and some of them are going to have no solutions whatsoever, you're also just going to have problems from above that are just complicated and might take a little bit of extra work. So think about them, rework them, and always, always, always work carefully and thoughtfully. Now on the back of this worksheet are a bunch of problems for you to work through and practice. So that is your homework for Monday. There are a total of six. Go ahead and get those off of Classroom or I guess you can copy them down from this video as well. I hope you have a wonderful weekend.